It's Ryan Randolph, aka Ryan All Star. I'm with my main man, One Elijah J. We do what we want to do. Yeah, and this is the drama set. The drama set. The comedian himself. It's a nice day in Philadelphia. It's simple too. The interview, he may ask the right questions, but if you get that wrong. They don't see the R, but it's Ryan All Star stands for you know. Ryan Randolph will be a star, so Ryan Allstar, the Dramedian. The Dramedian, the one and only. So, what part of Philadelphia are you from? No Philly, no Philly, born and raised, 19th and Erie Avenue, the nice town town. So what high school was you going to when you back in the day? I, I, I went to grads in high school. They kicked me out of grads, and I went to William Penn and got a chance to go to college. You know, I started attending the school of hard knocks. I might as well say. Yeah, different university. However, for a lot of us, that's how it goes, and it's a it's a good university if you make the positive end of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I dropped out of the school of hard knocks. It wasn't for me. <laughs> if, if you know what I mean, it just wasn't for me. We have a lot of young people out here looking into life, looking into new things they want to do in terms of their career, their goals, and uh, often we see a gratification of violence, sometimes uh, selling drugs, different things like that. What is your what is your stand on that? What would you recommend to the youth in terms of pursuing their dreams in the correct way? Well, to each individual, whether you young or grown, your life is your life, and sometimes some people have to do wrong things for right situations for their family. Now, I'm not saying go out there, hurt somebody, rob somebody, knock them over, or sell drugs to make a living, because you can get a job, you know? You can you can find a hobby and turn your hobby into your hustle, you know? Every, every, every hustler is not illegal, you know? So I would say do whatever it takes to survive, but know what you're doing, you know? If you're gonna do a crime, be ready to do that time. Just know, just know what you're getting into, you know? So it's really hard for me to say, it's really hard for me to say to the youth, don't do that, because I don't know a situation, because I did that. You know what I'm saying? I did it as a young and I did it as an adult, you know? But it just wasn't for me, mm -hmm. you know? So to each his own. Just know what you're getting into. Just you know, move on in a positive direction with your Dramedian abilities and things like that. So I wanted to expand on that. Talk about what does it mean to be a Dramedian? What is that term that you coined? Well, with the Dramedian, see, my thing is, like when people first recognize me, you know, from doing, uh, you know, the acting and just me, just me being me, period. They say, oh, you's a funny guy. I mean, I know I'm funny. You know, I, I make people laugh. So, but a lot of people kept calling me a comedian where I like to focus on drama. Like, I really want to become an actor. I don't want to be a comedian. I mean, I would love to make you laugh. So my thing was, I'm going to take comedy and drama and mix it together and just call myself a dramedian. You know, because if people keep wanting to call me a comedian, then when they see me do something serious, they're not going to take it serious. You know, I love drama more than comedy anyway. You know, you know, it's easy to make somebody laugh. I've been making people laugh since I was a kid. You know? Yeah, so it's just more or less a pursuit of who you are as a creative intellect. Yeah, because I'm a serious person every day. You know, it was a point where I would always be serious and say things and people would laugh. And I'm like, why are you laughing? I'm dead serious. Like, I'd be dead serious and they think I'm being funny. So I just roll with it, you know. For sure. So moving on with that. You have a lot of people that don't really know their niche market. You have some comedians that want to be serious, yeah. some serious people that want to be comedians. How did you find that balance in life? Uh, well, like I said, this whole acting thing, it, it happened by accident. I never wanted to be an actor a day in my life. I just started acting two years ago. You know, I was just fucking around having fun, and then when I see that you know, it's, it could be beneficial and also legal, you know, I decided to so you know what, I'm going to fuck with this and take it a little bit more serious. I've been taking it serious for about 18 months. You know, I've been doing it for about two years, maybe a little bit over two years. And I just found my niche with it. You know, people fuck with me. I'm giving them content. You know, like, don't get me wrong, I still do ratchet stuff. That's where they notice me from. I do the ratchet shit, but I also know how to touch on certain subjects. Like, I did a short film called Young about child neglect. I did a, a film called Committed about relationships and committing suicide over love. You know, and I got a bunch of other projects that I'm getting started on, you know, that, that has content, that has a message. I can't respect a man without a message. For sure. You know, I know when to be ratchet and I know when to be serious, you know? Mm -hmm. and with that being said, how do you feel the internet plays into that? I mean, we have Instagram, we have Vine, and Twitter's been in existence for a little bit now with Facebook, all that. Do you find yourself having different audiences based on the type of social media? Yeah, I do. I do. I was just talking to my partner about that. Where I'm, I'm, I'm at a, I'm at a place where I want to change my audience because I was doing a lot of ratchet videos. Like I'm not gonna stop doing them, but I was doing a lot of ratchet videos, and that was only attracting the ratchet people. So you know, I've been doing meetings with other filmmakers and everything where they don't really care about ratchet comedy. They don't. 
and I'm in, I'm in the business to make money and to actually get some recognition and some credentials. But I do think that the internet is the way to go because the internet changed the game. You know, it's easy access. People could just click a link. You know, I'm not against the internet, even though I hate social media. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But I gotta do what I gotta do to stay relevant and to get busy, you know? For sure. And then in terms of that relevancy, you know, you have people like Chris Rock right now. They came out with movies. And you have Kevin Hartz. And One of my favorites. Multiple people that, that paved the way in that regard that went from, say, doing stand-up to now they're owning businesses, they're owning the movies they produce. How does that inspire you going forward into getting the ownership? Well, well with the Kevin Hart situation, Kevin Hart truly inspired me because we're from the same neighborhood. Like, I don't know him personally. I'm from 19th and area. He's from 16th and area. I remember seeing him walking up and down the avenue. I didn't. He just was funny. He just smiled every damn day, you know? He was playing basketball. I didn't know he ever was going to be this person he is today. So he's definitely an inspiration when it comes to, you know, seeing people come from where I come from, you know, before they ain't have shit. And then they make it and they're giving back and they're not big headed. And I mean, I don't know him personally, but from what I see, if I had to judge him, I think he's a real genuine dude, man. For sure. And I re yeah, I was, I was talking about that with my mother the other day about how we really liked the fact that in his last movie, you know, Laugh in My Pain, he documented the fact that he was in Philadelphia. Yeah. You see him over at the Croc Centers, yeah. you see him see at him different still places. To right there on and Air. Exactly. And so, looking forward, I know you have goals of getting it out of the domestic areas, moving internationally, moving to different states and stuff. Where would you like to hit? What spots in the world did Ryan R. Star always want to see in his life? Uh, I've never been out the country yet. Never been out the country yet. We um actually me and my partner we got offered to shoot a documentary in Mexico for uh for some basketball guys, some overseas basketball players. You know, I just got to get my passport, so I just got to get that joint expedited. I got to hurry up and do it, you know, because they want to get over there, you know, before February, March. So I don't know if the season's still gonna be going on, but they just want to document something over there, and I'm getting my ass over there. I just want to go out the country. I've been to plenty of states, plenty of cities. You know, had fun there before I was acting, while I was acting, you know. So what are your favorite cities in the United States? Oh man, Philadelphia. Believe it or not, Philadelphia. And I'm not being biased. Like, I'm not being biased. I love being from here. I love it. You know, it's not a beautiful city. You know, it's not a beautiful city at all, but it's still my city. And I love it. Uh, New York City is too fucking busy for me. I like to look at it, but I cannot live there. Los Angeles is also beautiful. But one of my favorites is Houston. Houston, Texas, man. That's a beautiful motherfucking city. Houston, Texas. For sure. So we can look forward to seeing you down there, maybe with an Astros hat on. Oh, I had an Astros throwback jersey on when I was down there. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's when I had brazen shit. You know what I mean? Back in the early 2000s. But the last time I've been to Houston was about 06. For sure. You know, I've been a while. Definitely. So even coming back to Philadelphia, talking about some artists that we have around, what is the emergence of people like Meek Mill and then you have Quilly? I like City. about Meek Mills and Quilly and Quilly Mills. They have energy. You know, when I play a a Meek Mill song, I get excited. Like, you know, so I'm actually a fan of him. I get excited when his songs come on because he gives you that feeling, he gives you that motivation. Same thing with Quilly. Quilly know how to talk that shit, you know, and he got that, he had that energy. You know, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, they not the best rappers in the city. That may be true, that may not be true, but they are the only two rappers in the city to me that's bringing that energy. You know, I respect, you know, the hip hop heads and everything. Like, I truly respect Chill Moody. Chill Moody had me on MCV Jams in his video, Concrete Jungle, with Matt Wilds. You know what I'm saying? So I respect dudes like that, that create their own energy and motivate others, such as myself. You know, I'm not in the rap world, but they are still a motivation. Mm -hmm. and speaking and speaking on uh, Chill Moody, for example, yeah. I saw he just did that. People like Chill Moody that are paving the way in terms of the hustling for Philadelphia Sound and advocates for the city of Philadelphia in general. I respect Chill, because Chill is in his own lane. Chill get busy. Chill don't care about what nobody got to say about it, you know? He, he does his thing, man. I love the way he merchandise himself, he brand himself. You know, I even told him personally, I was like, damn, dog, like, I want to be like you, nigga. And he laughed at me. I'm like, no, I'm serious. I like how you have genuine support, you know, because sometimes a lot of people, a lot of people think that they get a lot of views and a lot of followers thinking that they're the shit. That don't mean nothing. That's just people checking you out. I'd rather have a small portion of followers and viewers that are genuinely going to support me versus a bunch of motherfuckers who, who don't give a shit, really, you know? And I respect then, everything Chill do. He get busy, man. He is who he say he is. What inspires you on a daily basis to get up and, and go do what you have to do? Man, honestly, my daughter. See, I have three children. I have me two sons. But my daughter, 
You know, I gotta be tough with my sons, but my daughter inspired me, man. She turned me into a bitch ass nigga. And my thing is, I know how I was with women. And I refuse to let a man be the same way that I was with my daughter. So I just wanna make sure I'm that man to provide and show her that I don't have to be a thug out here, a goon out here, a, a, a dealer out here just to make a woman smile, just to spoil a woman, you know? So that passion just her waking up every morning. I got to change the pamper. I got to make her breakfast and stuff like that. I got to take her to the daycare and run around, you know? And also got to provide, you know? A nigga still got to do what he got to do outside, you know, to feed the family. But um, that, seeing, seeing other people's stuff, Believe it or not, a lot of corny shit motivate me. Because it's like I be seeing a lot of people do the same thing I do. I mean, I'm not gonna say no knock to y'all. If it's a knock to y'all, so what? It's just I see a lot of bullshit. I'm not saying my shit is the best, but I do know my shit is better from where I from from where I'm at. You know, I'm still an underground actor. I haven't made it yet. You know what I'm saying? I only been on TV twice doing what I do as far as acting. Like I said, I was MCB Jams and uh, Philly Fame TV also played a segment when I did a PSA about abusing prescription drugs. You know, these other dudes, that, like I said, I know when to be ratchet and I know when to, to be positive. These dudes just do a whole bunch of foolish bullshit, but they're not giving a message. I have a certain lane for the ratchet and I have a certain lane for the positive. You know what I'm saying? I, I like to talk about real shit people go through every day. You know, it don't always have to be, oh, Let's do a goon movie. Who got the most keys? Who got the most weed? Shoot them up, bang, bang. Yeah, I love those movies, but I don't have to keep making them. You know what I'm saying? Everything don't have to be about big booty bitches. Like, you get what I'm saying? That's why, like I said earlier, that's why I touched on child neglect. I touched on suicide, you know? Stuff like that. And I actually, I have two films that we're working on for a film festival, but I don't want to say the content of it yet, you know? Because I'm quite sure this is going to come out before we even actually put in a production, but... I have two more short films that's going to touch on certain subjects, you know? For sure. And um, even going with that, what events in your life caused you to get to this mindset? Honestly, I'm just going to give it to you raw. You know, I used to rap, you know, but I never loved it. So I guess motherfuckers wasn't feeling the energy and, and neither was I. And like I said, you know, I used to be in the streets, you know. And the main reason why I'm not in the streets is because my family got indicted. I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. I got a brother that got sentenced to 18 years. And I got another brother that's about to come home from doing 10. So my thing is, I can't hustle out here in the streets. Why? Because I don't trust niggas. You know, it's a, it's a lot of snitches. I sat in courtroom and watch people point their finger on both of my brothers, two separate trials. You know what I'm saying? They point their fingers and I don't trust nobody out here. You know, that's why I was saying I can't tell somebody not to sell or to sell. You do whatever your heart, your mind, and your family situation allow you to do. You know? So with that, I'm, I was out here by myself. Like, I have no brothers. You know, when they was home, I was having fun. You got, I, I was never a balling nigga, but I, had, I didn't have to worry about bills. I didn't have to worry about feeding no children. You get what I'm saying? I was having fun. You know, I didn't have a care in the world, but when they got indicted and they actually got sentenced, that shit scared me. You know, this shit is not for me. I don't want to be up in the penitentiary. I'd rather be on the television, you know? So just with, I still have that hustler mindset from coming from the streets. You know, and I still got kids I got to take care of. They're not going to feed themselves. You know what I'm saying? They mothers need help. You know, it's just real, you know? It gets hard. I'm not scared to say, I'm not going to sit up here and say, oh, I do all this, I do all that. No, I'm, I'm an average man just like the person watching this interview right now, man. I'm still out here trying to survive. I am not bald. You know, I'm still getting by. So all that gave me the integrity and the ambition to do something positive, legal. I feel my niche with acting, so I'm gonna get busy with it because I feel this is the only thing that I have. So a lot of people might say, oh, you're just doing YouTube videos and World Star videos. Yeah, but those YouTube and World Star videos got me gigs to help produce somebody else's stuff. You know, I get paid to produce and shoot other people's stuff. I do a lot of behind the scenes work. You know what I mean? Me and my partner, Rue Lay, that's my director slash editor. You know, we do a lot of stuff that don't involve me in front of the camera, you know? I always love entertainment. Like I said, I never wanted to be an actor, but I always love entertainment. You know, and so right now I feel this is the only thing that I got as of now until I find something else, like, you know, that's going to coincide with it and, and, and get busy. I'm not doing this for fun. I'm not doing this for a hobby. I'm not doing this for likes. I'm not doing this for followers. I'm doing this for credentials. You know, I'd rather have credentials than a fucking buzz. There you go. Well, I'm doing what I need to do mm -hmm. so I can be able to do what I want to do in the future. Exactly. You know I like I mean? that. You know, because everybody say, I want this, I want this. People don't know what they want until they get it. 
You know what I'm saying? Because when you see something new, you didn't want that new thing to you saw. You know, so you gotta keep a creative mindset and you gotta sometimes think outside the box, man. I know I got a long way to go. I got a long way to go. I'm I'm still at the bottom of the totem pole to to the to the real important people and the higher ups, you know, but I'm higher than somebody else that might look at me as motivation. The same people that look at me as motivation, I look at you as motivation. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't do this shit if y'all not supporting me or motivating me. You know what I'm gonna do this for my family and my friends just to say my mom and dad like what I do, or uh, uh, the women like what I do, the guys like what I do. No, I do this for the people who don't know me. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't do this entertainment stuff for the people who already know me because they might be biased. You know what I mean? They might show nepotism. Like, you feel me? I do this for the people who don't know me, such as yourself. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that's watching. You know what I mean? So look. I'm a real one. I'm a real one. I'm a real one. I'm a real one, real one She gon' bust it for a real one She gon' pop it, she gon' drop it for a real one She said she made